Hi, uh, my name is Regina Pessoa. I'm an animation short film director. Um, I was, uh, I had the film uh, in the shortlist, Oscar shortlist for the first time uh, in 2007 uh, with tragic story with happy ending. Um, it was, uh, I was younger, of course, and uh, it was the first time a Portuguese um, film was shortlisted for the Oscars. Um, and then I was, uh, another film, I had another film again in the shortlist in uh, uh, 2020 uh, with Uncle Thomas accounting for the days. So this was my experience with the, the Oscar shortlist. Mm -hmm. My name is Laura Gonçalves. Uh, my film is called The Garbage Man and it's uh, running for the best uh, animated short. Hello, my name is João Gonzalez. I'm the director of the short animated film Mice Motions. And uh, like Laura, we, we, the film is shortlisted for best animated short film at the Oscars. Hello, my name is Philippe Melo, uh, and unlike my colleagues, I'm not up for animation, but for a live action short film with The Lone Wolf. Um, so yeah, uh, regarding my film, what uh, compelled me to tell my, my story. Um, in my films, I'm uh, interested in um, creating realities and scenarios that uh, normally are always based on the images that come from my subconscious. Uh, normally images from when I'm about to fall asleep or when I'm daydreaming. And what I like to do is to pick those images that turn them in scenarios and use them as metaphors to talk about topics that are dear to me and touch me. This, uh, this is in a way a therapeutic way for me to understand a bit more about myself because although in a way it's inspired by something personal, I'm never fully exposing myself and there's like an obvious barrier between both realities it's like having a using a, a pseudonym and uh, at, but at the end it's very important for me to understand a bit more about myself and uh, for example i did a film before it was called nestor and it was about ocd which is something that i relate to and i discovered that after making the film that actually helped me with ocd so yeah i wanted to make a film about loss and uh, use uh, reality based on my subconscious to create a metaphor about it. Well, in my case, um, I, I relate to a lot of the things you said, but um, I just love the writing. I love writing. And so I, I wanted to write something that uh, I could uh, shoot with one actor, in one location, in one shot. In case I wouldn't get any money, I could do it with an iPhone if I had to. So that was the, 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 the thing I knew I wanted to do, to write something that I could actually make. And then uh, I found inspiration in uh, late night local Portuguese radio, which is something that I love because uh, just like João, uh, I play music. So, so I do get to travel a lot by car. So I used to listen to these late, late night uh, radio shows. And in Portugal, they're very, they're very funny and very human, and there's a sort of a family uh, feel to it. So, so basically, that's how I got a lot of the inspiration and a lot of the dialogue. As for the theme of the short, it's a very dark theme, and I wanted to raise some questions. So that was some tough uh, investigation that I had to do to write the script, but I really felt like raising some questions about, you know, like a. Uh, the way people get away with things or the way the like general public uh, supports some people or judges some people. So I wanted to raise some questions about human integrity, about uh, human uh, uh, behavior, you know. Uh, and I always wrote characters that wanted to find redemption. So in one case, I wanted to, to write the character that mm, had no redemption. So this was all the process so these three aspects first technical of doing a one shot second you know a letter of love to the portuguese re local radio and third one a subject matter that might be a, a little bit more tough but i wanted to sort of approach and uh, 
raise some questions. Awesome. <laughs> Um, so I'll define my film in three words, um, intimate, family and portrait, um, intimate because it's a personal story, uh, family, because my family is telling the stories, uh, through memories, um, portrait because it is, um, the story of, uh, in the memories about my uncle's um, life story and journey, um, which is also um, a, a representation of a lot of uh, other Portuguese, thousands of Portuguese uh, people that went through the same moments in history um, in Portugal. And um, it's also uh, about celebration of the memories of this person um, besides being uh, having died 17 years ago we still talk about him and the one of the reasons why I also wanted to make this film it's not in these three words but it's part of the reason why I wanted to make the film was uh, that uh, celebration of um, moments of family together and uh, celebrating people that are not here anymore um, listening to you guys uh, talking about your ideas and uh, uh, the process, how uh, the the story of your films came out. As I'm the older uh, uh, director here, um, well, I, I have a, a little more experience, maybe. And uh, the most important lesson that I, I, I got uh, from my experience through all these years, uh, I learned it with my first film. And um, what I, this is for me, myself, uh, it's my, uh, my own lesson that I, 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 I taught to myself that uh, we can have a, wonderful idea we can have wonderful visuals but for me the most important thing is motivation that why i want to tell this story why i want to do this film because between us the ed makers we have to uh, be honest and animation uh it sucks <laughs> i mean uh when we are doing it uh day after day uh for years uh 24 or 12 drawings per second just for one character if there are many characters you can make the maths about it it's mad so for me uh what's more important the most important lesson that i i have it's find a good motivation uh the reason why i want to do this film the reason the reason why i go through everything to to make this film um and uh, in my, the films that uh, were mentioned before that uh, were both shortlisted um the first one tragic story my motivation it was uh, uh related to my mother she was different so i wanted to tell the story uh, that talks about being different in a small community this was my motivation uh to make the film for uncle thomas um uh it was make a film for him because it was important in my life. Uh, it was important to me. It was, it was not important for nobody. He was a humble man. He was uh, good for nothing in the small community as well. Uh, it was not very, it was not celebrated, but it was important for me. It had been important in my life. And I wanted to show somehow that one doesn't need to be to make uh, extraordinary things in life to be important in our life. So that was my motivation. And uh, yeah, it's a um, lesson that I keep uh, asking myself at each project. Uh, and uh, it's my most important uh, achievement uh, through my career. I fully relate to what Regina told, told right now. I, I normally joke that uh, in order to be an anima animator, you have to be a bit of a masochist. You have really to love the, the pain in a way. 
of doing because it's really a long and time-consuming method but at least for me at the end is like one of the best and most fulfilling sensations that, that you can have and um, but in my in this film specifically that I think the most important lesson that I learned um, was while doing it was that um, in a way I think embracing our own limitations is an integral and very important part of finding our own artistic voice and I, I have a, a very specific example that I, I sometimes I say uh, this film, I don't want to spoil the film, but it's centralized around uh, specific objects, in this case, the hats that the characters wear. And the, the curious thing is I uh, designed these characters uh, wearing hats before I actually knew exactly how the film was going to end. And the reason why they wore hats was very simple is because when I started doing this film, I was still... Well, it was three years, two years ago, I was still a bit new to animation and character design and I wasn't comfortable drawing hair. I'm not very good now, but at the time I was not going to risk it. So even before in my previous film called Nestor, the, the character wore a beanie. And in this film, they wore hats initially just for aesthetical purposes. And by, by doing that and by going forward with this design, uh, then I found a narrative that wouldn't exist if I they didn't wear hats. So yeah, it's interesting how sometimes a limitation makes you think more creatively and find solutions that sometimes you wouldn't have. And I say this like narratively, as I say in terms of style. For for example, I, I never painted, I never tried to draw. For example, more in a more realistic style. So I focus on limited color palettes, and I try to make the color palettes work conceptually for the narrative. So it's all in for my process, of course, it's always subjective, but for me, for my path, it was very important to understand my my strengths, but also my weaknesses and combine both to create creative solutions for, for my problems. Hmm. Interesting. I, I completely agree. Limitations develop creativity. Yeah, I do believe in that. Um, so uh, what am I most proud of in this film? I guess, I'm guessing we can all relate to what I'm most proud of because it's a, a similar process for everybody who makes films with their hearts, which is having an idea, an abstract thing, and then being able first to put it on paper, second, to gather a group of people who trusts you enough or works with you to, to, to turn that abstract idea or that story that doesn't really exist except in your head into something real so that process is always fascinating and i feel very grateful because you know there's a, a lot of people who do like uh, advertising or they film a lot you know uh, since uh, i have an, another profession you know so so but whenever i'm on set it's like i'm in heaven whenever i'm filming it's just a privilege so that's what I'm most proud of, that we actually did it. And a one shot uh, is always very tough because I mean, it's a 23 minutes shot. So, so we're holding hands to see if we can uh, finish one take, you know? Uh, so that experience of being together with the crew and actually feeling the, the tension, it was really nice. And I must say also that I'm really proud to be a part of this small group that actually uh, is representing Portugal at, at the Oscars because you know like ever since I was a little kid I watch the Oscars all the time and it's always like that thing that exists and that you dream of but it doesn't <laughs> feel real right it never feels real it's like okay you know but and you hear all these people saying oh you know I it was my dream and I rehearsed in the mirror to be saying these words and she's right okay but it's in fact true, and uh, uh, I'm really proud of the work you 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 did uh, and uh, that we are doing. And uh, I just really hope we we make it there. And I'm pr proud that our films are traveling and are being shown. I think it's really important, uh, even to make it easier for future generations to 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 believe that a project can travel that far. You know, because honestly. I never imagined that we would be having this conversation about being shortlisted for the Oscars. Insane. Yes, 
it definitely yes. puts uh, Portugal on the map as well. But yes. like you were saying, like uh, to have this, um, at least you know the younger gener generations can look uh, and understand that this is a possibility. It's not so. Regina mm -hmm. opened a lot of doors for us in in the animation, and uh, it's definitely it definitely helped to. Um, think that this is not the impossibility, but it's definitely I'm I'm also super grateful and uh, proud that I'm here in this in this circle <laughs> with all of you. I really loved your films as well, and it was very interesting what you were saying about the the team. It's it's funny because you have a really tense moment there when you're doing live action. It's more of about the intensity of the moment, and you have to finish everything in that small amount of time. In animation, we we spread it. This this teamwork is it's so 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 important. It's the same as in in fiction. It just gets spread in time, and uh, it's it's one of our most difficulties as as filmmakers and in the making animation animation films is uh the 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 need the possibility the the importance of paying uh, a team uh, the correct amount of money they deserve to be paid for the time that they work on the on the film for the the importance of their role in the film as well um everything is going up a lot in terms of prices everything is increased and the budgets of the films are still the same as they were uh, decades ago. And this is not um, gave a continuity to uh, to the to the quality of life of people that they had a few years ago. And this is a very big problem um, for for our uh, way of working. We don't. Uh, in in our studio, um, we try to always have the team working, always having work. We don't have, we work only on um, on authorial films. We don't do um, uh, publicity and um, uh, what is it called? Um, commercial commission work. Commissioned work. Uh, as as far we've been working for ten years, and we always been doing authorial films, and it is important to um, now, especially hopefully with this thing of having so many, uh, at least uh, in in terms of animation, uh, we have two in the in the in the fifteen. Maybe this can help as well to bring more. Um, attention not just to the films because of course it's very important for people to watch the films but it, to also to get finance to get a better um budget for the films and that's uh anyway I, if, i'm glad you mentioned uh the team were um because it's one thing that i uh it was very important for me and I, I think i learned so much uh, uh with the, the team uh with teamwork um and uh, uh through my films i learned that uh, we have to be generous with the team so it's a very important point we have to uh make the team feel well we have to prepare well the work because uh the more you give the more you receive if uh, we don't prepare well the scenes for the, in our case, animation for our our team, our animators, our in betweeners. If we don't prepare the scenes well, people are a bit lost and uh, they they don't give uh, as much as, as they could. So preparing well, for instance, a scene uh, is a, a way to for people to feel comfortable with the work they are receiving is clear, so they can give suggestions. It's so clear that they say, Regina, why don't you here uh, make like this? And I said, oh, nice. I haven't thought about that uh, because we prepare well the work. And this is uh, what I learned working with a team. It's uh, we have to be uh, generous to give in order to receive. 
And to finish my presentation, um, this is, I think, the most important quality of a filmmaker is staying humble. It's something that I really admire, that I learn for myself, and that I admire in other, other directors that uh, um, sometimes we see work, uh, film that is our reference. And uh, uh, it's a shock when we go to talk with that director or that artist and uh, uh, the person is arrogant or uh, not kind. And it's so much nice when we admire the work of a director. We go to talk to him and you know, we find a humble and simple person. And mm -hmm. we admire that work 10 times more. Um, so through my career, I learned that stay humble um, because uh, today we are here, but tomorrow we can maybe uh, the coin can flip and we don't know what happened. So, Stay humble and uh, open. Definitely. Mm. I agree. All it's right. Fun. So I guess it's time to go. Uh, but uh, it's an honor to be on this short list with you. And I have a very strong feeling that uh, we'll have the first uh, nomination. <laughs> I, I really, I'll cross fingers because <laughs> you know, we're all very as as creative beings we're all very insecure but i'm very secure concerning your work <laughs> <laughs> so, i'm very secure concerning yours exactly each of us like is secure for the other two and that will make it work. well let's hope we uh, in, uh, let's hope we, we all meet uh, over there and uh, yeah. <laughs> have a toast of champagne yeah, or just in Lisbon. That's okay. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> or just in Lisbon. <laughs> exactly. And Regina, thank you for, for, for opening uh, this path for everyone. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for everyone. As Flip says, uh, I, this conversation, really. Yeah. I agree with Philip. I think this time we'll have a, a nominee. Um, <laughs> finally. Um, <laughs> I, I, I must talk a bit also about my experience being nominated twice and not uh, being a short with short listed twice and not being nominated we can never avoid that feeling of a little frustration if we I, I, I suppose you are doing exactly the same as I did previously some years ago like oh I will never get nominated oh this will not not happen let's stay cool let's stay calm but there is always a little voice uh, mm -hmm. in our back that says, you are in this position, anything can happen. Um, so it's true that uh, uh, if being in this position in the Oscar shortlist and not being nominated is, to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest, I tell you the truth, there is always a little frustration, uh, even if it's not the end of the world. Um, but, uh, like Philip said, I think this time uh, at least one of you uh, will be nominated and uh, we, uh, <laughs> the others will be with you, yes. the one that will be nominated. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> bye bye everyone. Bye, bye everyone. So Good, Good luck. Good luck. Bye bye. <laughs>